Hey there, it's Artifacts, and as you can see, we've got a little bit of a different format going on right now. I'm gonna try to make the tutorial videos in this year a lot better than they used to be, and I hope that I can help you guys around to learn a lot of new things this coming year. As a lot of you probably noticed, I'm, I've started doing live streams every Friday, 8 p.m. Central European time, unless I say otherwise on my social media. So if you wanna be a part of that, check in every Friday. Now today I want to show you how you can do some snare sound design. You know, these big dubstep snares or drum and bass snares, neurofunk snares. A lot of people use layering, especially when you look on YouTube. There's so many people doing tutorials about layering or synthesis. And I'm going to show you how you can do pretty much a good sounding snare drum without both of the two. We're going to use processing and we're going to be making a snare something like this one or maybe even something like this one. Now, are you ready? Let's go into Ableton. So here we are inside Ableton. I've got a acoustic snare drum sample that I've selected for this particular um, video. And I'm going to turn on my Sonarworks plugin. This will uh, make it sound a little bit different for you guys, but it will actually make sure that my headphones are perfectly flat. And that'll mean that I can much easier design um, drum sounds on my headphones. So um, I'm going to include the uh, original final sample without this plugin on it in the start of the video so you guys can hear everything as well. Um, I have this snare room sample and it's called the snare of God. Now I took this from freesound.org so if you want to have the same sample you can find it there as well. It's a, it's a full pack and has a whole bunch of different snares, snare samples included in it. Now today I want to show you how you can use nothing but processing to make this snare sample in a really good drum and bass, dubstep or whatever other EGM genre snare you want. So we're not going to use any layering, we're not going to use any synthesis, we're just going to use this one snare sample. I'm going to start off with using an EQ8 and the first thing I want to do is switch to the mid side mode and in the mid range I want to high pass at around 100 Hz and in the sides I want to high pass a little bit higher than that. So I basically want to take out the fundamental frequency from the sides. Now I can also play around with maybe add a little, adding a little bit more high end in the sides. That sometimes works. Or a bit of mid range. But I, I think for this one this is perfectly fine. Now let's add another EQ. And open it up. And we can see that at 200 hertz is where our fundamental frequency is. So let's make a narrow Q and bring a good peak there. Now I can also see another frequency right around here. So let's bring this down. It's about here. And let's take another narrow cue and let's bring that down. We don't need that ringing frequency so much. A little bit of it is fine. That's better. So. I'm going to add a saturator to this and I'm really going to saturate this quite a bit. And let's freeze and flat. So now we can see what has become of this. So it, it's much louder. And we can see that it clearly has that fundamental frequency. And we can see that that frequency is actually continuing all the way throughout the snare. You can see right here it's still there. It's just really quiet. And that is because this is an acoustic snare drum sample. You hit the snare and you're going to have the same frequencies for the entire duration of the snare. They're just going to become more and more quieter um, the longer the snare goes on. We don't want that. If you have like a drum and bass snare, it's usually a really punchy snare. And that punch comes from that fundamental frequency that's actually really short. It's just in the first section of it and then Usually these snares have a more noisy, a more splashy high end or a more splashy tail to them which will make them sound even more punchy and heavy and that's kind of like the sound that we're going for here. So that already sounds good but I want to show you a trick and I never see people do this but this is what I do all the time when I do snare design, when I do kick drum design. I use this so much. Take an EQ and that fundamental fre frequency is too long, right? I want to get rid of that fundamental frequency in the tail of the snare. So I'm going to take an EQ, click on the gain, and I'm going to create an automation on the gain 
of that fundamental frequency and I'm just going to automate it down. So listen to the difference. This is before and this is after. That just sounds so much better. So let's freeze and flatten that. And you can actually see it in the tail of the snare as well. Now I'm going to use um, a, re a plugin I like a lot on drums called Isotope Alloy 2. It has a great multiband transient shaper in it. So the first thing I want to do is turn off the EQ and turn off the dynamics. I'm going to go to the transient shaper and turn it on and switch on the multiband mode. Now I'm going to go into the bands and you can really narrow these bands down. So you can actually go and narrow it down to pretty much that fundamental frequency. And then we can raise the attack. And you can hear we can get a lot of punch out of that fundamental frequency. Um, we can also add a little bit of attack on the game on the high frequencies, but I don't want to do too much because that'll just ruin the snare. Um, because that punch actually comes from that other band. Now I'm gonna back it down a bit on the game because we're clipping really heavily. So now we aren't clipping anymore. And I'm just gonna do a bunch of compression now. So let's start off with using a glue compressor. And I want a lot of compression. Now I'm gonna blend the original snare back in. And that will hopefully take care of that. Um, take care of the till. It hopefully brings the till back up a bit so it becomes a little bit louder. I'm also gonna do a little bit of overdrive. Bring the drive a little bit down though, and maybe the dry wet as well. So that, in fact, does make the snare a lot louder. Um, let's use a little bit of saturation. And that really makes the snare drum much louder. So now let's freeze and flatten that and see how it looks. So this already starts to look more like a good snare. I am though going to try to do a little bit more of that automation on the fundamental frequency and let's see if we can get an even splashier snare. And if we do the same thing in the mid range it might actually give a really nice effect. So around 1 kilohertz. That actually cleans the snare sample up quite a bit. Now, let's do another ice dope alloy and let's try and see if we can bring that transient back because we added quite a bit of saturation in the previous stage. So let's add another transient shaper into the multi bend mode and let's raise the attack. Now we can get a lot of punch out of it, but it, it's a little bit too much mid range for my taste. So I'm going to bring that down. A little bit on the high end. I'm gonna bring these sustains down a bit as well. Um, let's lower the gain a bit. Now let's try some camel fat. I think camel fat is a great tool on drums, um, especially the tube distortion. So let's raise that a bit, about 10%, maybe even more. actually get away with quite a lot. Um, let's lower the gain here in the end. Now I'm gonna use one more transient shaper called the Shock Audio Transient Shaper. Um, I find this one is pretty good. It's not a multiband one so you gotta be careful a bit. Let's just raise that a bit and add a little bit of drive. So that'll saturate the transient that we just created. And now I want to add two more effects. I'm going to add a final Fab Filter Pro Q, but I'm not yet going to do anything. First, I'm going to add a Fab Filter Pro L. And I'm going to boost this a bit. Now, I also want to load up a preset and bring the attack all the way down. And let's boost that volume. And now I want to use this EQ to finally shape the sound into what we want. So maybe a 
Give it a little boost there. I like what it does like that. That's actually pretty good. And a little bit more high end is pretty good as well. We're not getting too much gain reduction on the limiter either. So let's freeze and flatten this. And there you have it. So that's how you create a really good snare drum sample out of an acoustic snare drum sample with pretty much no layering at all. No synthesis involved, it's just processing. I hope you learned something in this video and if you did it would mean a lot if you can subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to bring this channel up, get more subscribers, we're currently at 52,000 and I'm gonna try this year to get a lot more subscribers. I'm also gonna try to make much better tutorial videos, I'm gonna try to do more tutorial videos. We've also started doing live streams every Friday 8 p.m. Central European time and that's been going really well. It would mean a lot if you guys can join in upcoming Friday. If you have some time, check the live streams out. I'm not sure what it's going to be about next Friday, but we'll see. And I hope you guys actually learned something today. Now, if you subscribe to this channel, it would mean a lot if you can click the little bell icon so that you can get a notification when I post a video. And... Other than that, yeah, if you are interested in private lessons, I'm going to start doing private lessons soon and you can find an email address in the description below this video. Send me an email, hit me up and we can talk about what you want to learn. The private lessons will be 50 euro per hour, so if you're interested, just let me know. If you want to be part of a music production community, check out the invite link in the description below this video. That's an invite to my Discord server. We are currently at almost 500 producers in that server and we are talking about music production every single day, helping each other get better at it, um, at music production. And if you want to be part of that as well, then come join in. It would be great fun. Now, other than that, there will be another video coming soon. And yeah, I hope you liked it. Peace.